and welcome back. If you haven't been here before, let me situate you in the situation. My name is Lena, I am British, I like books, I have worked in the book industry for a long time, and because of that, I've accumulated a lot of books. This is a series where I rip open the chest of my library and show you all of my books, colour by colour. Yes, I organise my books by colour, no, it is not up for debate. If you've missed it, I have a whole series. We've done red, we've done blue, we haven't done blue. We've done green, we've done yellow, we've done orange. And today I thought I'd combine and do the black and white books. Now those of you with eagle eyes have noticed that I have been dressing according to the colour that I am talking about and I can't express how seen I feel by people who picked up on that without me having to tell you. But today I couldn't let you down the commitment to the cause. The black and the white books must be honoured. So I was incredibly excited when I found this jumper on Depop. <sighs> do I lead a sad life? Yeah. Okay, on with the books. <laughs> the way this works is I show you through the whole of the bookshelves. First, you'll get to see every single book and then I select a few, pull them off and chat to you about them in more depth after the tour. So here's the tour, let's go. Okay, so first we're arriving at the black shelves. This is two, <laughs> if you can see back there, uh, two rows deep. And then this one is also two rows deep. So we've got two to go and then we'll go over to the white shelves. So Sue Turton, this book will help you change the world. I Find That Offensive by Claire Fox. Show Your Work by Austin Cleon. Vajek Poor by SF Saeed. Ooh, let's talk about this one, I've got a lot to say. London Rules by Dylan Jones. Things We Say in the Dark by Kirsty Logan. Survivor, a portrait of the survivors of the Holocaust. This is a photo book slash anthropological book called Gypsies of the World. The Gigantic Beard That Was Evil by Stephen Collins. And by my voice, can you tell that I want to talk about this one? Wonderland by Juno Dawson. The Girl and the Goddess by Nikita Gill. The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. Set in Coventry, where I'm from. The Women's Room. <laughs> <laughs> by Marilyn French. Look at that 80s shiny cover. The Illustrated Book of Bad Arguments. The Library of Unrequited Love by Sophie Divry. <gasps> A copy of 1984 in Chinese and in English. So the first part is in Chinese and then the second part is in English. If you want to know the story behind me buying this book, you can click up there. Oh my God, we have to talk about The Host by Stephanie Mayer. Jeez. Keep Going by Austin Cleon. Steal Like an Artist by Austin Cleon. Our Rainbow Queen by Sally Hughes. Look, we all gotta live sometimes. Just let me live. <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, it's just a book of the Queen in various <laughs> different coloured outfits. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> this is personally my favourite outfit. Closely followed by her surprise animal print love. A really cool copy of The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. It's got a beautiful like kind of chalk quote. I think they're called like puffin chalk classics, but they're really cool. The Myth of Meritocracy by James Bloodworth. A Portable Paradise by Roger Robinson. God, this is so good. Like if you're looking for a per like so good. My Purple Scented Novel by Ian McEwan. Meter Rhythm and Verse Form by Philip Hobson. Hobsbaum, Hobsbaum, Hobsbaum. The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ by Philip Pullman. Maybe we'll talk about that. There's so many to talk about. That's Your Lot by Limmy. God, this is one of the funniest books I've ever read. The Vagina Monologues by Eve Essler and My Nerdy Notes. Places to Hide by Dixie Wills. This is some incredible photoshopping and I've kept the book just for that really, to be honest. And also obviously for the impending apocalypse. And an old favourite, Anna Kessel, Eat Sweat Play, How Sport Can Change Our Lives. Next we've got Devoured. I like how sparse this cover is and then the author is on the spine. Anna Mackman. Hugh Lupton, Assembly of the Severed Head. Sapiens by Yuval Noah Harari. This is like a weird edition of this. You might recognise it more with this cover but um, I love this cover, it's like a vintage classic cover. Graffiti by Savannah Brown. The Wicked Truth When Good People Do Bad Things by Suzanne Ross. How to Break Up With Fast Fashion, A Guilt-Free Guide to Changing the Way You Shop by Lauren Bravo. Running With The Pack by Mark Rowlands. The American Edition of Two Years, Eight Months and 28 Nights by Salman Rushdie. I think this cover is so much more pretty than the British cover. <sighs> I Am Not Your Negro by James Baldwin. Tunnel of Bones by Victoria Schwab. Two copies of Some by David Eagleman. Uh, one was Craig's and one was mine and we both read it before we got together and now we own two. Oh! Bleh. The Firestarters by Anne Carson. Horrible Histories London. Against Empathy 
The Case for Radical Compassion by Paul Bloom. The Long Take by Robin Robertson, not to be confused with Roger Robinson. Roger Robinson, Robin Robertson. Got it. A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. Anne Bronte, The Tenant of Wildfell Hall. Look at this cover is absolutely stunning. Look at that. Ooh, ooh. And then it has a quote from the book on the back. Refusing the Veil by Yasmin Abali Brown. New American Best Friend by Olivia Gatwood. Uh, a friend sent this to me and it's brilliant. It's so good. Let Them Eat Chaos by Kate Tempest. Now Kate Tempest. Um, oh my God. Maybe we'll talk about this one. It's so good. Vertigo and Ghost by Fiona Benson. <laughs> We're getting into the good stuff. Yes, my companion book to The Crown. <laughs> I am very cool and I do plan to get more of these. The Grace Keepers this is one of my favourite books ever. It's by Kirsty Logan. Uh, you've probably seen a few of her books on my shelves by now. The Correspondence by J.D. Daniels. Uh, this is one of my favourite covers ever. I just keep it because I love the cover. Doris Lessing, Under My Skin. This is her biography of her younger years. <laughs> The Black and White Book by Sydney Cook and Garth Lean. Atonement by Ian McEwan. This is one of my favourite books ever. This is a kind of like weird edition where it just has a quote from the book on the front and not the title, which is cool. I love you. I'll wait for you. Come back. And it's got black sides. Super cool. War to Windrush, Black Women in Britain from 1939 to 1948. This is like a really cool biography of lots of black women that should be more prominent in British history. The Age of Earthquakes, A Guide to the Extreme Present. Looks like this inside. It's one of the coolest kind of layouts of a book that I've ever seen. I'd love to write a book like this. <laughs> the Silent History, again, really cool design. Threat by Julia Webb. Hymns by Chris O'Connell. God, maybe we'll talk about this, it's quite unusual. <laughs> the Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. You might remember that I did a video about these at the beginning of lockdown. Link up here. Uh, this is the only one that survived the cull, actually. I didn't keep the other ones. I just kept the first one because it's like obviously the best. Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is again from the same series of vintage classics of the Brontes. Whatever our souls are made of, here's the mine are the same. Beautiful. Um, the Good Terrorist by Doris Lessing. Oh my God, there's so much to talk about. Two Plays for Young People, Fairy Tale Heart and Sparkle Shark. I want to talk about that too. Jess Butterworth, Jerusalem. Oh, it's too much. Why do all my favourite books have black spines? Educating Rita and two other plays, Stags and Hens and Blood Brothers uh, by Willie Russell. Educating Rita is one of my favourite plays ever. London Underground, Amazing and Extraordinary Facts by Stephen Halliday. I Met Lucky People, The Story of the Romany Gypsies by Yaron Mattress. Oh, and there's one, look at this one hiding from me right here. Come get in here. Um, How to Cure a Fanatic by Amos Hartz, which I just read and really recommend. In fact, let's talk about that. So here we are stationed at the white shelves. Um, I have to state off the bat, so I don't mislead you, there are some non-white books on these shelves. There's no excuse for it, but, but what can I say? Original Sin led me here. <laughs> There are also some that are debatably cream, but we're not gonna think about that. Start off good with two of my favorite books ever. Spinster by Kate Bollock and Amanda Palmer's The Art of Asking with some <laughs> weird stains on it. I'm sorry, Amanda. <laughs> Aspects of the Novel by E.M. Forster. Lonely Londoners by Sam Selvin. How to Build a Girl by Catelyn Moran. This is not the end of the book. Oh, I wrote about this in my, in my masters. I might, let, let's put this one aside. Damn Good Advice for People with Talent by George Lowe's. <laughs> sure, Pastelina, sure. Walt Whitman, Leaves of Grass. Whatever you think, think the opposite by Paul Arden. I've forgotten a lot of my business power books probably come in this white section. You might see a few more. <laughs> R.I.P. The Friendship Cure by Kate Lever. This is fab. Another all-time favourite, Girl Meets Boy by Ali Smith. Again, quite grubby. I don't really advocate for the design of white covers in general. I think it's irresponsible, but here we are. <laughs> the Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar and Six More by Roald Dahl. I don't know if you guys do this, but I purposely tracked this down in a charity shop because I was determined to find the same kind of edition that I used to borrow from my library all the time when I was a kid. Do Purpose, Why Brands with a Purpose Do Better and Matter More by David Haight. I would actually really recommend this as business books go, it's really good. Catelyn Moran, more anthology. How to be Parisian wherever you are. Let's attempt this. Le art de la simplicité. Simplicité. <laughs> uh, by Dominique. I mean, I should probably reread this. The hundred dollar startup, fire your boss, do what you love and work better to live more. I've never read this. I can't recommend it or not recommend it, but I did like the title. Why I'm no longer talking to white people about race by Rennie Eddie Lodge. 
Catelyn Moran, Moranifesto. Persuasion by Jane Austen. Yes, I have too many editions of this book, whatever. Look Back in Anger by John Osborne. The Awakening by Kate Chopin. Chopin. A Lover's Dictionary by David Levithan. I hated this cover, so I stripped it down. <laughs> and now I only look at it naked. This is one of my all-time favourites, The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Mosim Hamid. Another all-time favourite, uh, there's a lot of the all-time favourites on the bottom here. Uh, Playing to the Gallery by Grayson Perry. Love Among the Ruins by Harry Leslie Smith. The Buried Giant by Kazuro Shiguru. <laughs> Craig always laughs at me because I can't say his name at all. Say it again, Kazuo. <laughs> Just it's... <laughs> and everyone will be happy. Some London poverty maps that apparently I have. Oh, more. Elizabethan London. That's cool. Time for Outrage by Stefan Hessel. Undivided by Vicky Beeching. There are about four books in the world where you will find my name at the back if you look hard enough. And um, this is one of them. Lena Norms! Very exciting. I've actually read this cover to cover at some point in my life, it was like eight years ago, but it is in my brain somewhere. The Everything Store by Brad Stone, Jeff Bezos and the Age of Amazon. The Rights of the Reader by Daniel Pennack. I clearly love this one. <laughs> a History of the World in Ten and a Half Chapters by Julian Barnes. I bet this is no longer true. 1,000 Things to Do in London for under £10. <laughs> and then another London guide. Why Fonts Matter. Literally a book about the theory of fonts. <laughs> my very grubby vagina. <laughs> Naomi Wolf wrote this and I read it with two of my friends, Hannah and Lucy, and it was a hilarious time. I learned some outrageous vagina facts. Maybe I should do a lies we're told about vaginas. The Oxford Book of Ghost Stories. A Guide to Being Born by Ramona Orzabel. The Life-Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck by Sarah Knight. Yeah. A Tattoo Penguin Ink edition of Bridget Jones' Diary. Being an Adult, The Ultimate Guide to Moving Out, Getting a Job, and Getting Your Act Together. This is a quarterly magazine put out by The Second Shelf, who are a feminist antiquarian bookshop in London, and it's absolutely bloody gorgeous. Art Matters by Neil Gaiman. The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying by Maria Kondo. How to Be English by David Boyle. I'm still working on that. There will always be in England social stereotypes from the Daily Telegraph. Offering no explanation for these. <laughs> Poems on the Underground, the seventh edition. Um, for those of you not in the UK, Poems on the Underground is a series of posters that appear on the underground that are poems that people can read while they're commuting and this is a collection of them. That's the whole story. Losing Eden by Lucy Jones, Why Our Minds Need the Wild. Whose story is this? <laughs> Um, by Rebecca Solnit, Eat Gay Love by Callum Swiggan, this really like cute pocket edition of Slouching Towards Bethlehem by Joan Didion. If you haven't seen the pink bookshelf tour, I have a beautiful edition of The Virgin Suicides that was also in these editions. They're Picador modern classics, but they're only available in the USA and it drives me mad because they're beautiful. Oh my God, Bambert's Book of Missing Stories. We must talk about that. Harold Pinter, Moonlight, A Reunion of Ghosts by Judith Claire Mitchell. Religion for Atheists by Alan de Botton. The Wish, the 99 things we think we want most. I should probably read this. The Marvelous Equation of the Dread by Marcia Douglas. A Little History of Poetry by John Carey. Do Improvise, Less Push, More Pause, Better Results. A New Approach to Work. We Have Been Harmonized, Life in China's Surveillance State, which I started reading before I went as a guest of the Chinese government to China and then probably stopped reading because I freaked myself out. There's a video about that up there. The Giant's House by Elizabeth McCracken. Oh my God, this very cool copy of The Day of the Triffids by John Wyndham. Look at it, oh my God. England, England by Julian Barnes. The Invoice by Jonas Carlson. Open up The Power of Talking About Money by Alex Holder. I Am Sorry to Have Raised a Timid Son by Kent Russell. Proxies, Essays Permitting Shame, Error, Guilt, Myself as the Single Source by Brian Blanchfield. I haven't read this yet, but I have no idea. Well, I should read this really urgently. Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown. Uh, the Best Book Ever Written, Jackie K. Trumpet. Dinosaurs on Other Planets, Zonal by Don Patterson, Playtime by Andrew McMillan, Joy Riding the Storm by Vanessa Kissel, I'm gonna talk about that one. Homie by Dennis Smith, Everyman Library Pocket Poets Poe, Some Say by Maureen N. McLean, <laughs> I've got some more business ones coming up, I'm warning you. Talk Like Ted, The Nine Public Speaking Secrets of the World's Top Minds, <laughs> How to Tell Your Story So the World Listens by Bobette Buster, Guest House for Young Widows, Among the Women of Isis, The Phone Box at the Edge of the World, 
How to Be Free by Tom Hodgkinson, Other Minds, The Octopus and the Evolution of Intelligent Life, Shades of Grey by Jasper Ford, Shirley Jackson, We Have Always Lived in the Castle, Pretentiousness, Why It Matters by Dan Fox, How to Be Bored by Eva Hoffman, can't believe I haven't read that in 2020, Bad Choices, How Algorithms Can Help You Think Smarter and Live Happier, No, The Power of Disagreement in a World That Wants to Get Along, Nights at the Circus by Angela Carter, If the Spirit Moves You, which is one of my favourite covers ever, look at it. Look at it! Politics and the English Language by George Orwell. How Fiction Works by James Wood. The World's Greatest Idea by John Farndon. Um, Charlotte by David Fokinos. One on One, 101 True Encounters by Craig Brown. Clean, The New Science of Skin and the Beauty of Doing Less by James Hamblin. And then we get on to our slightly rainbow section because I didn't know what else to do with them. Nancy Mitford, The Pursuit of Love. Poor Things by Alistair Gray. Guys and Dolls and Other Stories, which I really enjoy has been described as the Shakespeare of the speakeasy. The Leopard, Londoners by Craig Taylor. And finally, The Lady in the Van by Alan Bennett. Welcome back. I'm going to chat to you about some of the books I pulled off. Now, there are quite a few to talk about, so I'll be brief. But if you want any more information on these books, just like come and chat to me in the comments, ask me questions, I'm happy to answer. So, in the, in white, the white corner, uh, we have Vanessa Kazuel's Joy Riding the Storm. Uh, Vanessa is a British spoken word poet. <laughs> I've just realised on the back, Blue Peter presenter Lindsay Russell <laughs> says that she is the Beyonce of the poetry world. This is a collection my brother actually bought for me. He saw her perform at Greenbelt Festival and was like, you need this in your life. Um, I really love this collection. I've read it twice. Uh, it's published by Burning Eye Books, who I've talked about before, who are an independent poetry publisher who I love. It's just top notch. Um, one of my favorite poems in it is called Crayon. I'm gonna read you the first few lines just so you can get a flavor. Um, the kid holds a crayon like a last chance. I ask what he is drawing and he quickly shakes his head. I suddenly see the irre irrelevance of the question. His Play-Doh heart has not furled into a pulsing fist of fear. The crayon has not been seized from his clammy palms, not yet. Dot to dot are merely suggestions to him, round and menacing like the garden peas he refuses to eat at dinner time. Finite full stop on the ends of prison sentences. He sees past the correlation of conformity. Anarchy travels in wobbly lines. You get the idea. It's just so beautiful and the concepts in it are incredible. The second one is a translated book. This was a, this is a white book because I go by spine, but it's actually kind of baby blue on the front. Um, this is called Bambert's Book of Missing Stories by Reynard Young. Um, this is translated from French. Am I wrong? I am wrong. This is translated from German and it's a beautiful uh, story collection that I guess is technically for children, but I, it's one of those kind of like transcends children's genre kind of book. It's just like a beautiful little collection of short stories that are all pinned together by this like overarching concept of this man called Bamba who lives a very reclusive life in an attic and doesn't really talk to anybody, doesn't have any friends, but writes all these stories. And one day he decides to release the stories into the world. So he cuts out the names and the places of each story, like all of the context about the story, and then puts them in tiny little air balloons and sends them out into the sky. There's like a little letter with each one that says like, if you find this story, you can put the location and the names in and please return them to me. Uh, and so each story is told to us as they are returned to him with different names and places attached and different like little details that whoever's found them has put into them. It's not one that I hear a lot about and it's actually quite hard to track down second hand but if you can it's a bloody work of art and I love it. I wanted to highlight this one because I never hear anybody talk about it but actually I haven't read it myself in a really really long time. Um, it's called This Is Not The End Of The Book and it's a conversation between Umberto Eco. I know he's like incredibly famous but I always get Parent. I'm definitely saying that name wrong. Umberto Eco and Jean-Claude Carrier again. <laughs> I'm sorry to the French. This is really interesting because it was published in 2009 and it was kind of, um, I wouldn't say right at the beginning, but much more early on than we are now in the uh, kind of existential panic the publishing industry was having around ebooks and how ebooks were going to take over the world and physical books would no longer have a use. So this is actually uh, not a book at all, it's a transcript uh, between two incredibly intelligent people talking about the concept of the book, how it was formed, how it was invented and whether it is sacred. From my memory it also kind of mentions the idea of blogs and tweets and attention span and whether we need long form uh, information at all. Um, 
and according to all of the post-it notes and highlighting I have stuck in it, it was incredibly useful to me when I was writing my master's. I wrote a, an essay about the digital revolution and, and whether books and the environment can coexist. And there are like parts in it that um, I'm now coming back to me when I flick over it about like the urgency of information. Um, the book itself is a testament to the haste of, haste of man who wishes to communicate events at all ca costs to match the pace of history. A book is a report, a live book seems to me unique. So kind of like if books can be distributed faster, wouldn't, isn't that good, isn't that better? Uh, and then what do we compromise by doing that? So for instance, um, with eBooks, you can, they can just be updated, like you don't own them. If you buy an ebook on Amazon, it's still owned by Amazon, you're just paying to access it and they can change it at any moment. And I myself did that in my younger days in publishing. One of my jobs was to go into an ebook file, correct it, so say if there was a punctuation or, or a spelling mistake, go in and correct it, re-upload that file to the server, capital letters, um, and that would then feed through to Amazon and everybody's Kindles would be updated when if they owned the book the book would update and that's obviously kind of cool but also can be perverted so say with my copy of the handmaid's tale aptly um the cover on that that i own on my kindle account has been changed many times and actually last time i read it i noticed that it had a different introduction like somebody else had written the introduction and it was completely different and like for me that was outrageous and i don't like it <laughs> But, but us not being able to physically own information and therefore it can be changed is scary as shit. Anyway, I'm gonna stop talking about that book. It's freaking me out. Maybe I should reread that. Anyway, onto the black books. Hymns by Chris O'Connell. I thought I'd pull this off because um, it's again, not something that I hear very much about. And part of the idea of this series is so that you guys can browse bookshelves. I know that at the moment, bookshops have been closed for a long time. Perhaps when you watch this, they're starting to reopen. Dear reader, the shops had not reopened. Maybe, I don't know. At the time of recording, our year of our Lord 2021, um, all bookshops are closed and I'm very sad about it. So being able to stumble upon stuff that I haven't found uh, before has been useful. And I know that quite a few of you have told me before how interested you are in reading plays and how much you love reading plays. <gasps> that being said, <laughs> This is the book of a play I saw going on for 15 years ago, uh, done by Frantic Assembly, who are a pretty famous kind of uh, group in the UK. Uh, and it's about four men who attend a funeral together. And it's about cracking masculinity, uh, mourning, and like how male friendships have this very like intimate bond that, that can't really be translated onto the page properly or even into like speech. So it's a lot of like disjointed sentences and, Anyway, I really love it. If you're interested in that kind of thing, just telling you that it's out there. Next is Let Them Eat Chaos by Kay Tempest. Um, this actually says Kate Tempest. Um, they are now Kay Tempest and they're one of my favorite poets ever. Jesus Christ, how do they do it? This is a book for anybody who likes spoken word poetry and is concerned about the environment, the state of the world, how we exist together and struggles with pessimism. Like, are we inherently good or inherently bad as humans? It's really good in audio as well. It's a recording of them performing it. They performed it as a show. Uh, so it has music and beats behind it and it's beautiful. But whichever way you choose to consume it, it's gold. And the basic concept is this kind of like narrative voice that is floating over London. And then it kind of like zooms in to one person smoking on their porch and like what they're thinking about. And then zooms out again and then zooms into another family over here experiencing something completely different. Um, so if you like that kind of like collective narrative thing, oh, oh. Uh, Varjak Poor by SF Saeed. This is a children's book I don't hear talked about very much. Um, I really like SF Saeed's writing. Uh, he also wrote Phoenix, which I really loved. The illustrations in it are amazing. And actually I read this book because I was part of a steering group <laughs> when I was like an older teenager, when uh, they were trying to dramatize this for the stage. So I was one of the people who was like doing some of the improvising and like helping them form it as an idea. I then got to see it on stage and it was obviously incredible. I'll just read you the blurb. It's quite simple, but it's it's just really well written. Varjak Poor is a Mesopotamian blue kitten. He lives high up in the old house on a hill. He's never left home but then his grandfather tells him about the way, a secret martial arts for cats. <laughs> now Varjak must use the way to survive in a city full of dangerous dogs, cat gangs, and strangest of all, the mysterious vanishings. So it's kind of like starter um, 
mystery surrealist fiction for kids. I haven't read it for years so I won't say too much more than that because I don't completely remember everything that happens but I've always kept it because I love the illustrations and I think he is an incredible writer. He also talks really well about diversity in the publishing industry and does have some really good articles on that so if I can track them down um, I'll leave them below. I've been to the pub a few times with SF and he's absolutely brilliant and I've seen him talk a few times about how he feels about the direction of children's um, fiction and he's definitely somebody to get behind. I think he's great. Um, and then finally, <laughs> Philip Ridley's fairy tale heart. <laughs> Somebody said, Ridley has to be Dahl's successor on the back, which is a pretty cool quote. Um, this is a play that my friend Tabby directed when we were teenagers and I went to see it and it broke my heart. It was a really intimate small space uh, and it was performed in the round with candles everywhere. Um, and it's a, just a two person play about two teenagers who meet in an abandoned house and how their lives intersect and how their experiences of their home lives um, are really painful, but also help them get to know each other better. And it's really beautiful and short and heartbreaking. And if you're into like reading YA, plays I guess that's a thing that's a thing right um then this is like a great like play for young people especially if you're somebody who like works with teenagers like maybe check out he's also written loads of other stuff for kid for kids and I don't know uh that much about his career to be honest but I've always kept this around because the fairy tale heart broke my heart that's it that's all the black and white books that I own thank you so much for watching thank you so much as always to the gumption club for making these videos possible uh, if you are interested in joining a little community online uh, my patreons give a dollar per thing um, or you can even cap it so it's just a dollar per month I make about four or five things a month and then I add them to this beautiful little Facebook group that's called the gumption club and we have watch alongs and chats and we swap books like physically we post each of the books and swap book recommendations uh, they've actually formed a book club of their own so you can go and join that if you want and it's just a lovely little community um, to be around uh, in this strange year of our lord 2020 why does the lord have the year anyway if you want to watch the rest of the rainbow bookshelf tour you can click up here there are more bookish videos here or if you just fancy something random try over here thank you so much for watching and until next time frogs log out